Have you ever wondered what it would be like to zoom in all the way from this vast landscape all the way down to the subatomic level? Well, so do I. And so we're gonna learn how to do it together. Let me show you. Actually, let me first just show you the finished product because by the time you see this, I've already done it. Check this out. Now, before we start getting into this too deeply, let me just kind of explain how my thought process is here. We're gonna go through 15 levels of rainforest zoom from a vast image like one of these four, all the way down to the atomic level. So each time I'm choosing one of these four images, I need to think about what the next image is gonna be and make sure that I'm aligning it so that it, we get a good composition. Now this is level one, we have distant rainforest mountains, and in level two, we just want a mountain ridge. So I want it to be already a little bit detailed, but something that we have a lot to work with. And before I do choose an image, let me just kind of explain the rest of the settings that I have here. To generate the 15 prompts that I have for these levels, I just use Claude. I talked through it and kind of explained, here's what I want to do with this video that I'm making. I wanted to zoom in really far, let's say 15 levels of zoom. So let's think about what those 15 levels would be. But I also told it I don't want to change the style or the avoid prompts throughout the process. So let's make those generic. So my style prompt I have is just basically photorealistic, highly detailed, professional photography, perfect lighting, 8K resolution. Then my avoid prompt is cartoon, illustration, painting, drawing, unrealistic, and so on. That way I'm keeping both of those pretty generalized and I don't have to change them. This first image that I have is about a vast steep rainforest mountain range that extends to the horizon. And then the next one is going to be one mountain ridge. I'm doing a random seed because I'm gonna be choosing, you know, one out of four images each time. So it doesn't really make any sense to do a fixed seed. So I'm gonna keep that random. 25 steps is gonna work well for me. I have a guidance of nine, which is a bit high for photorealistic images, but my prompts that I'm giving are very specific. So I wanna make sure that it follows them. And the model I'm using is Albedo Base XL. And the reason why is because Albedo Base has been merged with, it says 200 selected checkpoints and 251 LORAs which are essentially smaller packets of images that you train it on so that it gets better at doing more specific things. So you could have luck with some of these other ones as well, but this is the one that I'm gonna be going with. And plus there are 67 fast workers on the supernet, so I know that I'm gonna be able to generate nice and quickly. Now let's look at these four images. We've got some really awesome starter images here, but I'm thinking the next image is gonna be a ridge, so I wanna find one of these that has a good ridge for me to zoom into. One that has kind of a, a good amount of detail and it's not so far away that there's no detail there, but also not so close that you can already see, you know, all of the leaves and stuff. So I'm thinking this little section here would be really nice. Let's add this to our gallery so that I have it saved and bring it over as a guide image. I'm going to have my strength be at 35. I think that 35% strength is a pretty good sweet spot for what I'm doing. And then I need to open up the camera settings and I'm going to zoom in all the way. 4x and then just move it over to where I want the next image to be which I think is going to be right there give it a nice composition maybe down just a bit although I don't really want that in the corner so I'm going to move that out of the way that's perfect right there and let's generate four more images I could do this where I'm generating nine or even more than that but I'm doing four because I'm making this tutorial I want all four images to be kind of visible but of course if you're going to do something similar you could do as many as you wanted here we go, we got four more awesome images to choose from. This image is of a mountain ridge and the next one's gonna be the forest edge. So we're gonna be just on the edge of the forest. And because I'm doing that, I wanna make sure that the image I choose has a good forest for me to zoom into. These are all pretty good. I think I'm gonna go with this top right one because we have a good amount of forest section here that still has sunlight shining on it, which will make for nice images. Let's go ahead and save that one. Bring it over as a guide image. Let's bring over our next prompt so we know what we're looking at. Edge of rainforest on mountain slope. And let's open up our camera settings and zoom in all the way. And actually, I don't think I even need to move around this time. I think that that's gonna be pretty great right where it's at. Now let's make sure I saved it to gallery so I don't forget. Awesome, this gives me actually quite a lot to work with. I'm gonna go with this top right one. I can see part of the interior of the forest, which is going to be my next prompt that I do, which is great. So let's use this. Let's bring it over to our guide image. And let's open up our camera settings and zoom in all the way. I'm going to move it just a slightly off because now we're going to be in the interior of the forest. So I want to have a little bit of darker stuff in the image as well. Let's paste our next prompt. All right, great. We got some good ones to work with here. We're now on the inside of the forest. We've got sun rays shining down. Our sun's coming from a consistent angle. So we're going to have it up so it'll match nicely with our previous ones. 
We are now on the forest floor, which is going to be a little bit kind of jarring potentially, but I think that the actual like final animation I'm making will go so fast that you won't notice it. Our next image is going to be a single tree. And so I need to think about which of these has the best single tree for me to choose. Let's add our prompt there. And I, I'm kind of just leaning towards this one here. I like this tree that's right there in the middle. So let's add it to our gallery and bring it over. And in our camera settings, we're going to zoom in all the way. And I'm going to go a little closer to the top where there's a little bit more greenery there. I kind of want to leave out that tree that's on the left side. Eh, no, it'll be fine. Let's just see. Let's see what the model does with that. And imagine. Awesome. We're really starting to get somewhere here. Now, my next one is going to be a tree branch with a textured bark surface. But I also want to keep in mind what kind of leaves are in the area. So I think I'm going to go with here because I'm going to want it to be kind of one big leaf that I can then zoom into and get into the cells of that leaf and then the molecules and the atoms of that leaf. So let's add that one to our gallery and let's... Put it there, open up camera settings, zoom in, move it over here. I think that that'll be good. I know it's saying a branch, you know, a reinforced tree branch with texture bark and stuff, but I think that we're going to do just fine, just like this. I saved it to my gallery just to make sure and imagine. All right, now we're really starting to get somewhere. So my next one's going to be a single leaf, and I think it's pretty clear that this is going to be my winner right here. That's what I want to zoom into. Let's go ahead and add that, bring it over, add our next prompt. Open camera settings, zoom in all the way. And this is perfect. This is a really nice leaf for us to go into because I want to be able to see the vein structure and all of that. Let's get our next four images. That's so cool. I think I like how this leaf looks the most, but I don't like what's going on, on the side there. I think that this one does a better job there with just having a kind of a bokeh blurry background. This one also does a nice background, but it's not as good looking of a leaf. So we're going with this one, bringing it over, pasting our next prompt because now we're getting into the microscopic world. Open up our camera settings and zoom in. I'm going to zoom in. Let's find a good part of the leaf. I think we just want it to be all green and really just kind of let it go crazy. And let's go back up and imagine. Ooh, awesome. Now, I don't really want water drops because we're supposed to be at the microscopic level now. So I'm going to skip these two at the bottom. And this one in the top right is kind of perfect. Exactly what I'm going for. So let's bring it up and we're going to get our next one, which is going to be more specific parts of these cells. So now we're getting into this, the plant stomata and the surrounding cells. And now we're going to start getting into more and more scientific terms and even more like abstract kind of images for it. We'll see how it does, but I'm just going to zoom straight in because I think that that's actually, I'm going to zoom in. Let's go in like over here and imagine. Oh, this is getting really cool. Let's see which one do we want to go with. I'm kind of just kind of basing it off of what we had to start with and want to make sure that it aligns nicely with it. So I'm not going to do this one. I think this one's probably the closest. Let's go with that. That's great. And once again, we're going to zoom in all the way. And this is perfect because my next image is just the interior of a plant cell. So that is, I think, going to be actually pretty perfect for it. And let's imagine. This is so cool. OK. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not actually all that familiar with the interior of plant cells because it's been over a decade since I took biology class. But I'm going to go with this one here because I think that there's funky stuff going on with that cell, that cell and all these little green dots. So I'm going to go with the bottom left one and we're bringing this guy over. And once again, we're zooming in further. And we're getting into the photosystem protein complex. I do actually, I think I want to add this little guy just because it's cool. And imagine. Ooh, these are getting so cool. Okay, I'm going to go with this one and bring it over because our next one is a singular pigment molecule. Once again, we're going to zoom in, but I'm going to be zoomed in on this singular. Actually, maybe I won't zoom in quite all the way. I just want this entire thing to kind of fill the, the screen and imagine. All right, now my next image after this one is just an atom. So I don't know which one I want to go off of. I think probably this top left one. We can kind of do a little bit of fake in it to make it look like that's an actual atom. So let's go ahead, grab that guy and bring it over. And we're going to zoom in to that specific part and see what it comes up with here. Ooh, we got some good ones here. I'm going to go with this one in the bottom right. Let's open up our camera settings and zoom way into our atomic nucleus. And imagine. All right, well, we got a bunch of balloons here, so we're not going to use that one. I actually do like this one on the bottom right. I'm going to go with this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cheat and I'm going to use the exact same prompt again, but zoomed in at one, one more layer. So then it's like a close up of the atomic nucleus. Make sure I'm not saying anything about electrons in here. Mm, this isn't really what I wanted. I think I'm zoomed in a bit too far. Let's zoom out so you can see the whole thing because it's trying to turn the red part into kind of a field. And that's not what I want. I want it to be a tightly packed jumble of protons and neutrons. 
There we go. That's more like it. It's still it's still kind of looking like a sun, but it's super cool. We're going to go with this guy, and then we're just going to go through our next level of zoom so that we can wrap this up. So let's zoom in all the way here, and we're doing our quantum foam at the Planck scale. Now, I know that this isn't actually to scale because we'd have to zoom in like, you know, millions and millions and millions of times, but you don't want to watch me do that. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm hoping for. You kind of get to like little strings of energy just interacting with each other when you get to the smallest scale. And that's exactly what I wanted. So now I have all my images. So let's open up our gallery and you can see that we've gone through all of these scales. So we started off at this image, zoomed in here and then here and then here. We just kept zooming in further and further and further to the tiniest, tiniest levels. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Final Cut Pro and I'm going to put these all in my timeline and have it zoom in so I can animate the whole thing together. I love to see what we can create with Sogni when we combine it with other tools, in this case, Final Cut Pro or whatever video editing software you're using. When you learn to take different tools and you combine them together, you can make such cool stuff. Now, I would love to see what you make with this, so feel free to share it with us and I'll see you in the next video.